Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Steven? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Movie vs. Book. What's the difference? Sponsored by Unpopular Opinion, and today we're taking a look at Deliverance. Guys, Deliverance was written in 1970 by author James Dickey, and it was adapted into a major motion picture in 1972, starring Burt Reynolds, starring John Voight, directed by John Borman. Interestingly enough, the screenplay was written by James Dickey himself, and he even had a small cameo role as the sheriff at the end of the movie. And one of my favorite bits of movie trivia, basically like ever, is director John Borman and James Dickey got into a fist fight on the set of the movie and Dickey broke Borman's nose, shattered four of his teeth, but then the two became friends afterwards and they became really close. So that's like the coolest bit of movie trivia ever. But either way, Deliverance is about four city dwellers who go on a canoeing trip in rural Georgia and what starts off as a fun weekend retreat from city life turns into a struggle for survival. Now I've wanted to do a video on Deliverance for a very, very long time. I personally think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. It's very thrilling super exciting and I think it's a really awesome true horrific horror movie it's not a horror movie but it's definitely one of those things that would end up on Mr. Nightmare or something like a, hey what was the scariest thing that ever happened to you while I was camping this happened it's not over the top and it's kind of realistic so I think it's like a true realistic horror movie but not an actual horror movie and it is undoubtedly responsible for turning Burt Reynolds into a superstar so that's what it's got going for it so today what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at the differences between the movie and the book we're gonna see what was changed omitted or altered from a certain point of view and we're also going to see what the movie did similar to the book. So with that in mind, let's get right into this. Guys, grab your paddles, load your canoes, because we're going up river in Deliverance, movie versus book. What's the difference? <laughs> So guys, I'm very happy to report that this movie is very accurate to the book. I would say it's like an 85% faithful adaptation to the book. You know, the movie, to my surprise, a lot of the dialogue was extracted verbatim from the novel. Because it's there. It's there, all right. You get in there and can't get out, you're gonna wish it wouldn't. Answer. Sure, this river only runs one way, Captain. Haven't you heard? You ain't never gonna get down to end. You ever had your balls cut off, you fucking ape? The overall story structure and skeleton of the book transitions to the movie very well. I mean, the movie does omit certain things, certain backgrounds. So overall, like the characters, where they end up is the same, how they get there. Sometimes it's a little changed, but overall, the plot, the same. Our four main characters in Deliverance are Ed, Lewis, Bobby, and Drew. In the book, they're all good friends. They all know each other well. Whereas in the movie, that's not really the case. In the movie, Ed and Lewis, they're best friends. And Drew and Bobby, they're friends with Ed and they don't really know Lewis that well. And they don't really like him. In the novel, Lewis is an avid outdoorsman. He loves to go on adventures. He's an adventurer and explorer. And he's literally a champion archer. He is very, very skilled with a bow. He's also extremely muscular and he has a very high spirit of adventure and excitement, which Ed really admires about Lewis. He goes on these outdoor adventures all the time and one time he even broke his ankle on a fishing trip he was in a steep ravine he fell he broke his ankle and he had to climb out from the steep riverbed and crawl back to his car so Lewis does this sort of outdoor activity all the time now honestly in terms of personality and character wise Lewis is virtually the same in both movie and in book now a major difference between the movie and the book is the fact that the story is told from Ed's first person point of view so Ed is our narrator in the book we get to hear his private thoughts, stories told from his very personal perspective, his point of view. So he's unquestionably the protagonist. He's unquestionably the main character of the book. We also get to hear his private thoughts and he sometimes recalls certain memories that don't have anything to do with the trip that only he's privy to, we get to know. In the movie, the movie's told from a third person perspective. So the central focus is not solely on Ed. So we get to see the bigger picture. So it's not just told from Ed's point of view. We see multiple different perspectives through the movie 
movie. And for the first half of the film, the dominant character and the one who has the most attention, the most focus on him is Lewis. So the majority of the focus for the first half of the movie is on Lewis and it leads us to believe that he's the main character. The book opens up with Lewis trying to convince his three friends to go on this canoeing adventure with him in rural Georgia along the Kahulawasi River. The area of this river and the surrounding parts in the woods, it's being dammed up, becoming a dam, becoming a reservoir so they could make a lake for a recreational area and for electricity to power certain places around this community. However, the movie opens up with our characters already on the way to this trip. So we don't see Lewis having to convince them. We see them on the way to the trip and there's kind of like a montage. We see that the area is already being dammed up. We see the flooding, so we see like trees being flooded, bulldozers, heavy equipment, heavy machinery, industrial zones, power plants, all along the water, raising the water level. So before our very eyes, the landscape is already being transformed. The process of this lake being started is, is already going on in the movie. So like I said, in the novel, Lewis has to convince his three friends to go on this trip because it's really their last chance to do it. It's the last chance to enjoy this environment, to enjoy the wilderness before it gets flooded. Then the book goes into detail about the character's personal Alive. So we know in the book that Ed is a graphic designer or he owns like a company where he does artwork for advertisements. We see in the first 30 pages, he's doing an assignment or he's working on a project with a model. He's doing a consultation kind of thing for an advertisement. We know that Lewis is a landlord. He owns a couple of different properties. So it gives him a lot more financial freedom to go on these trips. Both Drew and Bobby are involved in sales and Drew's involved in like a soft drink company. So like imagine soda or something. He's a salesman in that position and he's very proud of that job. So in the novel, while they're on their way to the Kahulawasi River, Lewis explains to Ed that he's been to this area numerous times. He knows it very well, and he's had a lot of different experiences with the locals there. However, on the way, Ed is having second thoughts, and he kind of doesn't want to go through with this. He'd rather go play golf, but he said he was going to go, and he's only going because he knows it's going to make Lewis happy, and he doesn't want to upset him. So needless to say, the movie omits these details completely, and it starts with them arriving at a gas station in rural Northwest Georgia. Georgia. In the book, when they arrive, Ed immediately doesn't like the place and he's super uncomfortable in the rural Southern environment. He sees the locals and the people there as white trash and he's not accustomed to this sort of secluded environment or small community living. So they ask the gas station worker if it's safe to go down the river from their launch site in Ori to the town of Antry. However, the gas station worker is kind of not standoffish, but he does say it's not a good idea and it's not safe and they probably shouldn't go ahead and they probably shouldn't go on the river but Lewis dismisses this and he ignores the guy's advice. So in the book at the gas station they see a kid with extreme birth defects and he's playing the banjo and the banjo has strings made of rubber bands so Drew being a guitarist he likes to play the guitar he joins in on them and they play the song Wildwood Flower and they actually have a really good time doing it. They're having fun they go side by side and they're standing next to each other kind of like imagine if they're posing for a picture as guitar and banjo side by side that's how they're playing it in the book. After that, after the song is over, Drew asks the old man for the kid's information so he can come back and play with him at a later time because he had a good time and he's like, hey, I'm gonna come back and play with this kid in the future. So the old man acquiesced, he gives them their information, they exchange information, and then he asks the old man where's a good place to launch their boats. So the old man at the gas station says, all right, there's some flat ground eight miles down the road. You can go there and you'll launch their boats there. And we find out that the deformed kid, his name is Lonnie. In the movie, Drew and the kid who's probably the result of an incestuous relationship. They play the banjo, but they play the iconic dueling banjo song. It was a pretty cool sequence. However, it wasn't so friendly and the exchange didn't go so well for Drew in the end because after they finished playing, Drew is excited. He wants to shake the kid's hand and the kid just, just snubs him kind of ignores him. And the people there in the movie are actually very standoffish, very hostile from the beginning. And they're treating the outsiders kind of like Outsiders, like, what are you doing here? We don't like you, we don't belong. Very standoffish from the beginning. It's a weird omen, but after he tries to shake the kid's hand, the kid completely ignores him. But in both book and movie, they do hire some local people to drive their cars to their final destination. So when they finish their canoeing trip, their cars are gonna be waiting for them. Like I said, there is an immediate hostility between the city dwellers and the locals in the movie. But several times throughout the book, the locals do warn the city dwellers, our four main characters, it's not a good idea to go down the Kahulawasi River. But Lewis ignores the advice and he disagrees. 
Hercules. So in the novel, after they launch their canoes, initially there were some setbacks because they're not experienced. They don't really know how to do canoeing that well. So there was some delay for lack of a better word, but once they get sailing, they get sailing. And when they're on the river, they see a lot of litter and plastic bottles and they even go under a highway bridge and the water is kind of dirty, but they get past it eventually. Whereas in the movie, their initial launch goes fine, uninterrupted, they're having a good time and there's no litter, there's no under highway bridge. But when they're going down the river, they do see like a small rope bridge where that deformed birth defect kid or incest kid is standing watching them with his banjo. Drew tries to wave at the kid and he's like, hey, what's up, how you doing? And the kid's just ominously staring at them as they go by. So it's kind of like a creepy warning of what is to come. That wasn't in the book, but in the movie, the kid is watching them as they go by in a really creepy way. While on the river, Lewis is leading the expedition and he's espousing his normal explorer, adventure, nature, survivalist philosophies. And they're having a good time doing it. Did we beat that? You don't beat it. You don't beat this river. In the book, unquestionably, the friends are having a good time. They're enjoying Lewis's company and they are enjoying the trip. In the movie, Lewis and Bobby, they're in the same canoe and Lewis yells at Bobby a lot. He's hollering at him, giving him orders, barking at him, screaming at him. And this causes some tension between Lewis and Bobby. But when they traverse the rapids, they do actually enjoy that in the film. Later on, after the rapids, when they set up camp, we see a scene where Lewis and Ed are in a canoe and Lewis is shooting fish with his bow to demonstrate his really impressive archery skills. <laughs> So he's shooting fish with his arrows and he's retrieving them to, gr to grill them and fry them up for dinner. And this is how we see that Lewis is a very skilled archer. And in the boat, Lewis and Ed have a normal deep philosophical conversation, a deep conversation. Uh, Why do you go on these trips with me, Ed? I like my life, Lewis. A manly man talk about, you know, the machines might fail and society might fail. And this is where I'm, I wanna be when, I, when the world goes under. I wanna be here when the world goes under. Yeah, but why do you go on these trips with me? So like in the movie, the guys are kind of enjoying themselves, but they're not enjoying themselves the same way that Lewis is. So in the book, Bobby doesn't say that he hates Lewis and Lewis doesn't shoot fish with his bow and arrow. That's something completely made for the movie. However, in both mediums after the first night camping, Ed goes out with his bow and arrow and he tries to shoot a deer. However, he misses. In the book, he overthinks the shot and at the last minute he pulls up and that's what causes him to miss. Whereas in the movie, he gets nervous, he starts to panic, and that causes him to shake the bow uncontrollably, and he's unable to release on his own terms, and that's how he misses the shot. It's a little over-exaggerated in the movie, but the fact is, when he's drawing upon a live target, not a paper target, it's a little more difficult for him to take the shot. So in the book, Bobby was complaining constantly on the second day. Kind of wants to go home, complaining nonstop. He's not really enjoying this anymore. So unprompted, Ed asked, asks Bobby to go in the canoe with him today because he kind of suspects that Lewis was pushing him a little too hard. Whereas in the movie, Lewis straight up tells Ed, hey, you gotta take Bobby with you. I don't want him in my boat today. And now this is where we get to the infamous scene that Deliverance is known for. Now, due to YouTube's terms of service policy, just know that what I'm about to talk about is very graphic and disturbing. So viewer discretion is advised. This is gonna be graphic. Also, the word used to describe what happens to Bobby, it's banned on YouTube, but- It runs with grape! It runs with grape. So in both book and movie, Ed and Bobby land their canoe on the side of the river, take a break, and they encounter two hillbillies. One of them is toothless and he's carrying a shotgun and the other one is tall and lean. So in both book and movie, what starts off as something that should have been a simple hello, how you doing greeting, quickly escalates into something extremely hostile. These two are very hostile from the beginning and the situation escalates very, very quickly to something extreme. The situation becomes really tense and at gunpoint Bobby and Ed they're forced to walk deeper into the woods away from the river. So these two hillbillies are like, get up into the woods or I'll shoot you. So in the book, Ed is tied to a tree and he's tied so tight that he's struggling to breathe. In the movie, the hillbillies take off his belt and they wrap it around his neck and secure him to a tree and he's not moving, he's not going anywhere. This is when the hillbillies order Bobby to remove his clothes. Now let's you just drop them pants. 
drop? Just take it right off. I, I mean, what's this all about? Don't say anything, just do it. So in the film, Bobby does try to resist and he does try to run away, but he's unsuccessful. And the hillbillies toy with him and they kind of fondle him. It's a really disturbing scene and they're just messing with him all while Bobby's begging for mercy. This is when he violates Bobby. He sodomizes him and tells him to squeal like a pig. It should be noted though, that the super iconic line, squeal like a pig is not found anywhere in the book. So according to behind the scenes trivia or like behind the scenes facts, that line was either improvised by Ned Beatty, the actor who played Bobby, Bill McKinney, the actor who played the hillbilly, or someone on set, like a crew member. So one of those three people suggested to say this line during the movie and it's not found anywhere in the book. So in the book, the grape scene, it's, it's actually very quiet, very silent, minus Bobby screaming in pain and screaming in discomfort and agony. <laughs> Besides from that, there's no toying with Bobby. There's no squeal like a pig. It's just, he gets right to business. So in the book, while Bobby is being violated, Ed sees Drew and Lewis in their canoe. However, they go by, they pass them by and leave them, which causes Ed to panic even more. Whereas in the movie, we see the boat slowly move by and they land next to where Ed and Bobby's boat was. So in the movie, Ed is removed from the tree. They take the belt off of him and the two hillbillies, they're discussing what they're gonna do to Ed. And behind them, Ed notices that Lewis has got his bow full drawn and he's just waiting for a good opportunity to strike. So when the toothless guy hands over the shotgun to the taller hillbilly, that's when Lewis releases the arrow. And it stabs the guy, pierces him, and the dude drops his gun. Ed is able to retrieve it and the toothless guy runs away. In both mediums, the hillbilly dies virtually in the same way. He initially falls over, he curls over in pain, shock, agony. He stands up, he tries to walk away, then he turns around and reaches for them and then he falls over and dies. However, in the book, I mean, Ed didn't see Lewis coming up from behind. He doesn't see Lewis take the shot. So when it happens, it completely comes out of nowhere. And everyone's like, what the hell just happened? An arrow. And so the toothless guy runs away. Ed retrieves the gun. Bobby's laying there all traumatized and, and embarrassed. And for a full 10 minutes, Lewis and Drew don't approach the scene. Literally 10 minutes goes by from the moment the guy dies until Lewis and Drew approach the scene and assess the situation. Whereas in the movie, they immediately walk up on the scene. Drew actually chases the toothless guy away and Lewis watches the guy he killed die. So he, Lewis is just watching the guy die. That's not the case in the book. So in the book, Lewis says the only reason that he and Drew turned around is because they heard Bobby screaming in pain and they thought that he was bit by a snake. So they decided to come back and help. In both mediums, however, Bobby is in a daze, in a trance, and he is utterly humiliated. And as they all process what happened, they're just trying to soak it in. Like, all right, what just happened? This is when they discuss what they should do next. We killed him, Andrew. Shot him in the back, a mountain man, cracker. So in the book, in a fit of rage, Bobby kicks the rapist in the face twice. And then finally they get him to calm down and control himself. In the movie, we see him put his clothes back on and he's about to desecrate the body, but they, they grab him and restrain him in time before he does anything to deface the body. What do you think, Bobby? So in both movie and book, they're discussing what they should do. Ed and Bobby are in a daze. They're very indecisive and they're still processing the ordeal that they just went through. Drew, his idea is he thinks that they should go to the police and tell the police exactly what happened. He thinks that they should tell the police the truth because he believes that what they did was justifiable self-defense. They killed someone, but it was legally within the confines of the law that they were allowed to. They, they won't get in trouble. It was a justifiable homicide. That's what he thinks. Lewis, on the other hand, and he thinks that they should hide the body and bury it so they can avoid all entanglements with any law enforcement. We gotta get rid of that guy. So Lewis's logic is they're in a rural small community. They're in rural Georgia where the communities are so small that everyone knows each other intimately well. They're either really close friends with each other or they're all literally blood related. Shit, all these people are related. So being that everyone in the community is probably literally related to each other, Lewis thinks that they're not gonna get a fair trial and he doesn't wanna come back here to stand trial when the jury is made up of people who could be cousins or uncles, aunts, brothers to the guy they just killed. Damned if I want to come back up here and stand trial with this man's aunt and his uncle, maybe his mom and his daddy sitting in the jury box. In the movie, Lewis gets a little caught up in the moment, a little too excited. He kind of goes native. He kind of goes a little rogue. It is a matter of the law. The law? <laughs> The law. And he's kind of carried away screaming and kind of acting crazy and macho. What law? Where's the law, Drew? Huh? 
This doesn't really happen in the book. Obviously, Drew and Lewis have a heated discussion, but it doesn't escalate as much as it does in the movie. Lewis says that since the area is gonna be flooded very soon, if they hide the body and bury it, it's gonna be at the bottom of a lake and no one will ever find it. You know what's gonna be here? Right here, a lake. Hundreds of feet deep. Hundreds of feet deep. On top of that, they can get out of this situation with nobody ever knowing what happened and Bobby won't have to face the humiliation of telling a jury and newspapers and press and lawyers and judges what he just went through. Damn it, we can get out of this thing without any questions asked. So in both mediums, Ed and Bobby, they agree with Lewis and they want to bury the hillbilly. They want to just sweep this under the rug and pretend like nothing ever happened. We get connected up with that body and the law, this thing's going to be hanging over us the rest of our lives. So they take a vote on it. You believe in democracy, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, they will take a vote. They side with Lewis and they decide to bury the body. Where? Anywhere, everywhere, nowhere. In the book, Lewis takes the arrow out of the man that he used to kill him and he shoots it into the river to get rid of all the evidence. So in the novel, they bury the guy in like dirty, rotten, moldy earth. That's not really dirt. It's mo mostly like moldy leaves, rotten twigs, or like disgusting ferns. So they're not digging him a, a hole in dirt. It's just a pile of muck and rotten, moldy, old leaves and old sticks and ferns. But it was a shallow two foot grave. So in the movie, they dig a shallow grave next to the creek, but it's an actual dirt. It's not like in a weird pile of nasty rubbish or anything. It's an actual dirt. And Drew is the most visibly disturbed in the movie. Like you see him in extreme emotional distress. You see him kind of like in a daze. You see him digging much more frantically and much more like distressed than the other people. So this is really taking a toll on Drew. So. In the movie, after they finish burying the guy, they take a long piece of trunk, like a bark, and they just lay it over the grave, and they put some sticks on top of it to try to conceal the body. That doesn't really happen in the book. They kind of just cover the, the hole, and then they leave. And like I said, in the book, Drew was not as like panicky or frantic or disturbed as he was in the movie. It should be noted though, by this time in the book, the moment they covered the body up, Ed started to have second thoughts and he actually considered digging the body up and going to the police, but it's too late now because once the deed is done, the deed is done. There's no going back now. So they plan to get back to their boats and pretend like nothing ever happened because this is gonna be hanging over them for the rest of their lives. What's the plan, Lewis? Just paddle on down the and get the cars and go home. So as they're paddling down river, they enter into a massive, massive gorge. So in the novel, as they're paddling down, it's super loud, they can't really hear anything. And Ed thinks that he hears Lewis calling to him, but he's not entirely sure. That's when he sees the back of Drew's head move funny, like he's kind of going like this. And he feels like he saw the hair behind his ear move a little, like wind just brushed by and then bam, Drew falls into the river, he falls into the river and capsizes the boat. And that means Ed also falls out of the boat with Drew. But Drew was wearing his life jacket in the book. Also, Drew and Ed were in the aluminum canoe. So when they capsize the boat, it starts rolling through the rapids into the rocks and Lewis and Bobby have no way of getting around it. They crash into it. So this is the canoe. This is the other canoe. It just perches up in the air and catapults them out and they're all in the water. So the wooden canoe bursts open and bashes on the rocks and disappears. And they're swept through these massive Massive rapids. Like I said, in the movie, Ed and Drew are in the wooden canoe. And Drew is still very disturbed at what just happened. And again, he's in extreme emotional distress. He's not wearing his life vest and he's not being responsive to when Ed is calling out to him. So he's like, Drew, put your life jacket on. And Drew's kind of panicking, not listening, unresponsive. So in the movie, Lewis is looking around, watching the gourd, looking up, or like watching the gorge, looking at the top of the cliffs. And then we see a look of horror on his face. It zooms up to him and he starts screaming, don't stop, go, 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 don't stop, don't stop. Ed is suspecting something's wrong with Drew. So he wants to pull over to the side of the river and, and Lewis is like, no, don't stop, keep going, keep going. And this is when Drew gives that nod and boosh, falls into the water. He's not wearing his life jacket. So he sinks right to the bottom. And Ed's like, what do I do, what do I do? And then his, his boat gets pinned up on some rocks and bam, the aluminum boat crashes into it, smashing it open and everyone's in the water. They're tumbling through the rapids. It is chaos. So the three guys, they're tumbling into the horrible rapids, the dangerous rapids. They're getting bumped around, banged into rocks, but they survive the fall off of a massive waterfall and they end up in a cove that's kind of calm and kind of sheltered from the top of the gorge. But this is when the real nightmare begins. So in the book, after they survive the rapids, it gets dark 
almost immediately. And Lewis reveals that he has a broken leg, but it's not a compound fracture. It's a bad break and it's swollen and nasty, but not a compound fracture. In the movie, he has a compound fracture of his femur and this was a brutal, gruesome, traumatizing wound. A leg broke! You see a lot of his flesh is hanging out. There's a lot of meat on the bone. It's open for infection. It looks really bad. So the femur sticking out and there's like meat attached to it. That's uh, gruesome. <laughs> so in the movie, Ed, he's looking for Drew. He's trying to find him. He's screaming, Drew, Drew, where's Drew? And, and Lewis is like, Drew is shot. Drew is shot. He keeps screaming, Drew is shot. Drew was shot. Something happened to him. What? Drew and we, the audience, Ed and Bobby are like, what? What's going on? What What are you talking about? So in the novel, Ed and Bobby don't look for Drew. They're not trying to find him, but like in both mediums, Lewis is screaming over and over that Drew was shot, that he saw Drew get shot. So he said he saw Drew got shot and they, they believe it was the toothless guy who was holding the shotgun on them. You mean that other guy shot him? Did you see him? <laughs> they think he's on the top of the cliff and they think that he shot Drew because Lewis said that he saw him. He's on the top of the cliff and he's just waiting for them at the bottom. Lewis says <laughs> that other guy, that toothless bastard, shot him. He's right up there. So the rapids that lay ahead of them, still very dangerous and it's exposed. So there's really no way that they can escape. There's nowhere for them to go because if they leave the protection of this cove, the toothless guy on the top of the cliffs can shoot them and kill them. But if they go through the rapids, they're gonna die. Like they're trapped in the gorge. There's no way out. They are trapped in this gorge. Lewis, we're, we're trapped in this gorge. So in the movie, Ed doesn't know what to do. He retrieves the canoe and some of the gear that they had. And he says to Lewis, like, what do we do? What am I supposed to do? What are we gonna do, Lewis? You're the guy with the answer. What the hell do we do now? And Lewis just pulls him in and he's all like, now you get to play the game. Now you get to play the game. And this is when Ed decides he has to climb the cliff with his bow and arrow and kill the toothless guy. So in the novel, when Ed decides to climb the cliff to kill the toothless guy, Bobby's protesting, he's arguing. He thinks it's a bad idea and him and Ed have a little struggle. However, Ed wins the argument. He's convincing Bobby that this is the smarter move. So Ed gives Bobby some very specific instructions. So he says at first light, he wants Bobby to load Lewis into the canoe and go down the rapids as quick as you can. Ed is like, if I don't return Turn. Just go, just leave me. Even if I kill the guy, just leave me at first light, go. Because if he sees you and he starts shooting at you, you probably have a better chance of surviving on the rapids than down here in this exposed position. And he also says if the toothless guy starts shooting at him and he has to leave Lewis, leave him behind, but come back for him later. So like in the novel, Lewis doesn't tell Ed it's time to play the game. Ed makes the decision to climb the cliff on his own. However, before he goes, Lewis does give him a pep talk and gives him a motivational speech. Like you can do this. this is what I want you to do. Remember this, archery this, advice this, and Ed is up for the challenge. He's climbing the cliff. In both movie and book, it's a long, arduous, difficult process. It's nighttime. He's having trouble climbing this cliff. In the movie, there's a scene where Ed is kind of demoralized and he's looking at a picture of his wife and kid in his wallet. He drops the wallet off the cliff and he's like, no, that doesn't happen in the book. Either way, when he finally gets to the top, this is when things go crazy. So I should mention, you know how I said in the beginning of the video that in the movie, Lewis is kind of mocked up to be the protagonist or he's got the central focus of him on the first half of the film. Well, by this time, the focus goes away. It shifts away from Lewis and it's thrust onto Ed. Ed has to take up a massive responsibility. The fact that he's climbing the cliff, the fact that he has to take care of everybody, he has to be the leader now. Now, unquestionably, Ed has become the protagonist. He is the now central dominant figure and the main focus of the film. So that's a pretty big difference between the movie and the book because like I said in the book, up until this point, he is the narrator. It is his story from his point of view. The movie, it has shared perspectives. First half of the film is on Lewis. Now it's completely on Ed. So Ed has to step up to this big role and responsibility to save everybody. So in the book, when Ed finally reaches the top of the cliff, he climbs into a tree to use as like a deer stand, deer blind, you know, to get the drop on the guy. He's hiding in the tree and he's just waiting for the toothless guy. In the movie, he merely hides behind a boulder and just waits for the dude. So in the movie, when the sun comes out, Ed sees his target and he sees a man walking into the line of fire. In the movie, Ed draws his bow, but again, he panics, he hesitates, and that causes his bow to shake violently and it's interfering with his shot and he's struggling to release the arrow. So in the book, 
book. You know, he's still in the tree. He sees his target. He sees a man in the clearing and he does draw and he does overthink his shot, but it's not to the same degree in the movie. He releases the arrow on his own terms and he takes the shot. In the movie, like I was saying, he's struggling, he's shaking, he's panicking. And this is when the man notices him and turns and aims his rifle at him. So he fires his rifle and he misses and it hits right next to Ed. And that causes him to release the panic of, oh, he just shot at me and he lets go. This is when Ed falls over and he <laughs> stabs himself with his own arrow. It goes through his side. And as the man is approaching him, he quickly takes the arrow and <laughs> pulls it out. And the man approaches him. <laughs> He's at his mercy. And then he falls over dead. Ed shot him in the throat. You can see the arrow, he killed him. So in the book, when Ed releases the arrow, he hits the guy, but as he does, he actually accidentally falls out of the tree and lands on his arrow. So the guy realizes he's hit and he just takes his gun and he's firing multiple shots into the tree, but he doesn't see Ed and Ed runs away and he hides behind a boulder and the guy's firing into the tree and he sees that he hit the dude right here, just below the neck, bends over and blood is oozing out of him. Kind of like if you're a drunk guy vomiting into a toilet, that's how he describes the blood flowing from this guy. So Ed's hiding behind the rock and he falls asleep. So when he wakes up, he has to cut the arrow out of his side and he tracks the blood trail into the wood to find the guy dead in a clearing. So like I said, in the movie, Ed is about to be killed. He's at mercy of the guy and then falls over dead. Turns out Ed got him directly in the throat, good shot and killed him. In both book and movie, Ed does a quick examination of the body and to his horror, he finds this dude actually has teeth and he thinks he killed the wrong guy. And he thinks this is probably just some random dude. However, he is examining his mouth and some dentures fall out and is revealed that this guy is missing teeth, just like the dude with the shotgun. However, he's not 100% sure that this is the same guy because it doesn't quite look the same. And when you're in a heat situation like that and you're in a life or death situation he didn't have a good enough look at the dude or he couldn't really recall him that well so he thinks this is the guy but he's not 100 percent sure so like it doesn't really look like him ed has his doubts but it's probably the same guy so in the book ed carries the dead body to the cliff and he it's morning at this point unquestionably it's light time or the light in you know, it morning he sees bobby is still in the clearing in the cove and he didn't listen and he completely ignored the advice of when it's light get in the canoe and leave and he is pissed at Bobby. He's so mad. He thinks he's a coward. He's like, you're an incompetent idiot. And he's considering, he's so mad he considers taking the rifle and shooting at him as like a revenge or I'm so mad at you. I'm just gonna take a shot at you. Because realistically where the toothless guy was standing and where Bobby and Lewis was situated, they were right in the line of fire. Had Bobby not listened and Ed failed, they would have been killed. So Ed is so mad. He considers taking the rifle and taking a shot at Bobby in, in anger. So in the book, Ed goes through the pockets of the toothless guy and finds a card, finds his name on the card, and his name is Stavall. However, it also says that he's an honorary deputy sheriff of Helms County. That's not in the movie. Those things don't happen in the movie, but what does happen in the movie and in the book, Ed ties a rope around the guy and tries to lower him down the cliff. And once the rope runs out, he tries to climb down the cliff, but the rope snaps and they both fall. In both movie and book, Ed lands into the water and is for the most part unharmed. But in the book, the body lands on some rocks and is mangled and disfigured and mashed apart. So Bobby and Ed, they can't make a positive identification on the guy. So book Ed and book Bobby, they're not really sure if it's the same guy and they can't confirm because the face is distorted. In the movie, the toothless guy falls into the river and Ed and Bobby are able to take a look at it. And Bobby asks like, are you sure this is the same guy? Maybe it's just a hunter that was up there, but they think it's the same dude. So in both movie and book, they tie rocks to him. They weigh him down and they sink him to the bottom to hide the corpse. This is is when they load Lewis into the canoe and they start making their way down the river. So in the novel, Ed is very, very angry at Bobby because he thinks Bobby is useless and competent and he's kind of like dead weight. So this causes a lot of tension between the two. They eventually find Drew's body in the river, but Bobby doesn't want to get out and help Ed. And Ed is mad and he threatens to kill Bobby with a knife if he doesn't go and help him. Like I said, in the book, there's a lot of hostility, animosity, and tension between Ed and Bobby. This isn't really the case in the movie. They stumble upon Drew's body and they both go out to examine the corpse. So in both book and movie, Ed and Bobby, they look at Drew and they're looking at his body and they see a head injury and they're like, 
was this made by a bullet? I can't tell. Like this could have been made by a bullet, but it also could have been made when he fell into the water if he hit his head on a rock. So in the book, they ask for Lewis's opinion. They show him the injury on Drew's head. There's like a wound right under his hair by his left ear. And Lewis thinks that he was grazed by a bullet. Lewis says that he was grazed. So in both mediums, they tie rocks to Drew and they sink his body and they hide it in the bottom of the river. Logic being is because if they bring his body back and there's an autopsy and it's found out that the injuries to his head were actually made by gunfire, it's gonna cause them trouble. There's gonna be an investigation and people are gonna think, well, who shot at you guys? And it might connect them to the two people that they killed and buried. So in order to protect themselves and to avoid more trouble with the cops, they have to weigh his body down and hide him. So after that, they go through one last crazy set of rapids. It's difficult, it's tough, but when they make it through, they come up with the plan to tell the cops that this is where they had their accident and this is where Drew drowned. That's right, that's right, Lewis. It's our store. Lewis, we're back. In the movie, the area on the side of the river, there's a bunch of rusty junk cars. In the book, there are no junk cars, but Ed is able to discern the landscape. He's able to tell like, there's a yellow tree right there. I'm gonna use that as my landmark. So Book Lewis, throughout this whole ordeal, he's remained mostly silent. And since his injury, he isn't crying, he isn't moaning or groaning or screaming in pain. And it's needless to say that his pain tolerance in the book is a lot more higher than it is in the movie. So in the book, he's mostly calm and conscious, but he's just not speaking. You know, he's cognizant, he's got his wits about him, but he's just trying to rest. And again, he does, he's not crying like he is in the movie. He's not squirming in pain. <laughs> <laughs> He's just being trying to rest. However, he does comply with the story that Bobby and Ed make up and he decides to go along with it. I understand, Ed. I understand. However, to be fair, to be fair, Lewis in the movie, his leg was like hanging out of his flesh. So him groaning in pain, that's not impugning on his toughness or his masculinity. Everybody would do that. But it is important to note that in the book, Lewis was taking the pain much more quietly. He was just holding on to his pain. While on the final stretch of the river, they finally make it to the town. In the movie, you actually see them paddle through the flooded areas. So you see trees that are being submerged. You see those bulldozers, those heavy equipment, those machineries, and you actually see the, the workers like dumping rocks into these piles to make like a reservoir. So you see the industrial zone and you actually see the process of them flooding this area. Again, like the dam being constructed, they're making the reservoir. You see the heavy equipment, the bulldozers, the industrial equipment. In the novel, that's not the case at all. You just, they're paddling through and they stumble across a farm. They're going through farmland and they do consider going out of the canoe and running to find a farmer, but they figure that's not worth it. They'd rather find a bridge or some kind of road, which is exactly what they do. They end up back in town and that's when they call for help and they get Lewis to a doctor. So they tell the authorities what happened. They say that Drew was drowned and they show them the rapids where it supposedly happened. In the novel, while they're recovering, Bobby and Ed on their own realize that there's a possibility that someone might find their smashed canoe higher up river than and where they said they had their accident. So on their own, as a preemptive measure, they alter their story a little bit to say that they crashed twice, broke the canoe, and then they all got in one canoe and it was harder to control. And that's when they fell out and Lewis broke his leg and that's when Drew drowned. Whereas in the movie, they actually, the cops found the canoe on their own and Bobby is kind of folding under pressure and Ed is like, they found this thing, you have to stick to the story. They found it higher up river, farther than we said. And the cops are highly suspicious of the trio in the movie. So they have to make a new story up on the fly. In the book, the deputy sheriff tries to question Ed, but he's extremely hostile from the get go. Ed is arguing with him and the deputy admits that his brother-in-law was hunting over the weekend the same time that they were in the river and that he's missing, he's disappeared and he's not come home. So the deputy thinks that the trio are responsible for this guy's disappearance. However, the sheriff comes over and calms the guy down, argues with him and says, hey, hey, listen, listen, you're upset about your brother-in-law, but we can't prove that they had anything to do with that and we don't have any evidence to hold them. You have to back down. So in both mediums, when Bobby and Ed go to visit Lewis in the hospital. The police are waiting for him. You know, Lewis is recovering. They're trying to fix his leg and he's sleeping, he's resting. And they're waiting for him to wake up so they can question him. How you feeling? Never better. However, he pretends to have no memory of anything and he claims that the last thing he remembers is them approaching the rapids. What happened on that last set of rapids? I don't remember nothing. Nothing. 
Due to his injury and his condition, the police believe him, and this allows him to avoid any further questions from the police. In the movie, in general, like from the get-go, the police are suspicious of Bobby and Ed. While they're searching for Drew's body, the deputy does say to the sheriff that he doesn't believe them and he thinks that they're lying. This is when the sheriff tells our, our main characters that the deputy is upset because his brother-in-law's gone missing. Also, in the movie, Bobby and Ed are being driven to the hospital by a taxi driver, and they're driving through the town, and and the taxi driver is reflecting on the town and the fact that the rising water level is gonna flood this whole area so the town is being relocated. So you actually see buildings and structures being taken up and driven somewhere else. And he's kind of reflecting like, hey, this town's about to die. It's about to go under. Like we're about to leave. The flooding and the damming is not only covering the river and the wilderness, but it's also engulfing our town. That's not really the case in the book. That doesn't happen in the book. And there's no mention anywhere that the town of Antry or the communities around it are going to be completely flooded or submerged with water. Yes, it's true that the water levels are going to rise, but it's not to the level it is in the movie. Book Ed, he visits Lewis one more time in the hospital, and then he plans to drive Drew's car back to his family. They're met by the sheriff, and he's again with his hostile deputy. And in the book, he straight up accuses Ed of killing his brother-in-law. And again, this causes a heated argument, and the sheriff has to adjudicate it by like, listen, we don't have any proof. They, we can't prove that they're guilty. We can't hold them for anything. You gotta calm down. However, in both both mediums, both movie and book, right before Bobby and Ed are about to leave, the sheriff does say to them, don't ever do this again and don't ever come back here. And he indirectly states by saying this that he doesn't believe them and he, he knows that they're lying. Don't ever do nothing like this again. Don't come back up here. And before Ed leaves, he looks around, he goes back to the river and he notices that there's a cemetery that graves and coffins are being dug up and the gravestones are being removed because this part is going to be flooded and this part is the river is gonna rise and cover the grave. So they're just trying to remove and relocate the cemetery elsewhere. However, book Bobby doesn't tell Ed that he's not gonna see him for a while. And in the book, we actually see Ed driving the car back to Drew's house and visiting his wife and explaining to his wife what happened. But he doesn't tell the truth. He lies to her and says there was an accident that Drew drowned and she's pissed. Drew's wife is pissed and she blames Bobby, she blames Ed, and she blames Lewis and it's just like, just leave my house, just get out. This is your fault. So the movie ends with Ed returning to his family. He goes home and he's like, all right, the weekend's over. He's lying in his bed and then he has a nightmare where you see a rotten, bloated hand rising to the surface and it's the hand of the guy they buried, the hillbilly. But the area is all dammed off and it looks like a reservoir and it's just floating to the surface and then Ed wakes up screaming. That's the end of the movie. However, the book goes a little further and it doesn't end there. The book explains how Bobby and Ed slowly lose touch with each other and they lose contact and they, they, they see each other in public a few more times after that. And all they give each other is a passerby kind of like, how you doing, nod. Besides from that, they lose touch. They fall out of contact. And it's been said that Bobby hopped around from job to job, but he eventually moved to Hawaii. And for the time being, Book Ed is extremely paranoid. He's constantly watching for the cars driving down his street, and he's constantly reading newspapers about the area of Ori and Antry. He's constantly reading these newspapers, so he wants to confirm that they haven't found the bodies and that they're not gonna get in trouble. However, once the area is completely flooded and the dam is complete and it's now a lake and nothing happens, he finally gets comfortable and has the peace of mind knowing that Drew, the toothless guy, and the rapist are at the bottom of the lake and no one's ever gonna find them. So Book Ed and Book Lewis are still actually very good friends. They're still best friends and they still shoot bows together. They're still having a good time. I mean, Lewis is still recovering, so he has a limp. And that's really it. That's where the book ends. Well, guys, that's all I have for you. Those are basically all the differences between Deliverance, the book, and the movie. Like I said, this movie's pretty accurate to the book. There's not a lot of major changes to it. And overall, the beginning, the end, the skeleton structure, it's all the same. Now overall, if I had to pick what I like better, I'd say I like the movie more than I like the book, to be honest. And the reason is because I like the fact that it's it's everyone's perspective. I like Lewis. I mean, Burt Reynolds is super cool. I think he did a great job. The performance is the acting. Lewis was definitely my favorite character. And I liked how in the movie, we see other perspectives. So when they're going down the rapids and like Lewis is like, don't stop, go, go. That sequence was really cool. I really love that scene in the movie. And if I had to choose a favorite scene, I guess it's in between, like it's tied between when they're discussing what they're gonna do with the body. This ain't one of your Fucking games! That's right, I kill somebody. They're like, all right, do we bury this guy? Like, there's gonna be a lake right here. Right here, far as the eye can see. Where's the Lord, Drew? That was a pretty cool scene. I'll stand by. 
so were you. But I also love the rapid sequence where it's like, Drew is shot, Drew is shot, and now you get to play the game. Those were two really, really great scenes. And I think Deliverance is one of the greatest movies ever made. It's one of my personal favorite movies. I highly recommend you watch the movie. I highly recommend that you watch the book and Guys, that's all I have for you. So guys, that's Deliverance movie versus book. Were you surprised by the differences? What do you think you're gonna like better, the movie or the book? Or what did you like better, the movie or the book? Comment below to let me know. If anything surprised you, if you were disappointed, whatever, just comment below to let me know. Guys, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and to check me out on Instagram. That will be linked in the description below. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the next, well, sort of, unpopular opinion.